In this scene from the 2012 movie, Abraham Lincoln spells out the terms of Reconstruction. All they heard was the first time any president has ever made mention of Negro voting. In 1865, he said freed slaves who were intelligent or had served as soldiers should be allowed to vote. The 14th Amendment, passed in 1868, guaranteed this right as part of the full citizenship accorded to African American men. But for much of the 20th century, voting remained a contentious issue. The 19th Amendment, ratified in 1920, gave women the right to vote, but the racial divide remained. Some states continued to limit voting either through measures like the poll tax or direct intimidation of African-American voters. In the South, there were even whites-only primaries. This is Sam Tannenhaus of the New York Times. The first modern Civil Rights Act was signed by President Eisenhower in 1957. It created a federal commission authorized to enforce voting rights. Senator Strom Thurmond conducted the longest filibuster in history, more than 24 hours, in an effort to thwart the bill. But it passed. The location for the meeting with Senator Ribicon Still, voting was not equal for all. Massive resistance in the Deep South was organized to keep blacks from the polls, and legal enforcement was hampered by all-white juries. Voting rights became a central issue in the civil rights movement. I think this march will go down as one of the greatest. In 1965, uh, the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. led the march from Selma to Montgomery for better voting laws. The nation was shocked by images of the marchers being attacked. And less than five months later, President Lyndon Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act of 1965. It barred states and districts from curtailing the vote on the basis of race, color, or language. It is wrong, deadly wrong, to deny any of your fellow Americans the right to vote in this country. Sections 4 and 5 of the bill included special provisions to ensure fair voting practices in a number of states, most of them in the South. Voting rights advocates say some citizens there continue to be disenfranchised. But the Supreme Court's close ruling on Tuesday, striking down Section 4, suggests that conditions have changed since 1965, and it is left to Congress to reconsider the act.